hey everyone and welcome back to the channel so if you are like me working in finite element analysis simulation and research you know how quickly papers pile up like for a single research or topic you can have more than 50 pdf or so on depending on the study keeping track of methodologies key findings and noble approach across domain of publication is really a big challenge what if there was a smarter way to interact with your research material, right? That would be really awesome. So today I want to show you a new tool I've been exploring and definitely you might have heard of it, but maybe you haven't used it thinking that this is any of those other gimmicky AI tool that is of no use in research. But I came across this uh, notebook LM by Google and it's a uh, AI powered assistant um, designed to work specifically for your uploaded documents. So it could be a simple document, it could be a technical research article or so on. So for us in the research field, particularly um, in simulation or experiment, this could be uh, really useful for how we digest and synthesize information from complex papers. Uh, definitely when you have a lot of papers, you don't have time to actually dig into every one of them line by line. Sometimes you want to just brush through the different approaches they have used. If you only find it very relevant, only then you dig into it. Uh, that's how uh, I at least work. So we'll be focusing specifically on using it uh, and see how this actually works. So I'll click on try. So I'll click on create a notebook. So what it actually does is it creates like a container in it you can add different resources so you can add different sources for example you can connect to your Google Drive where let's say you have a folder with your research article that you are researching you can also include Google Doc Google slides you also have links so you can link uh, paste the link of different research articles that you want to study so for example, let's say I have a research article. So, by the way, this is one of my research articles. I'll just copy the link of this paper and I'll click on website and paste it and click on insert. So probably it, it will read through the article and I can click on add source and you can actually see that it shows the source limit. So probably this is like okay one of 50 so i can add like 50 sources this is uh, actually madness uh, you can also include youtube link so that is also something that can be done and of course you can add pdfs so i will again add few of the different sources so maybe i can just go through different reference maybe i can open few of the reference here so this is another research article so i'll just copy the link it is loading so i click on the website and just paste the link and click on insert and it will search through the article probably it does not have access so it may happen if it does not have the access so it depends on subscription based journal or open access and so on. So by the way, it's fine. So since this is my paper and uh, I have it. So what are the different things you can do? First of all, the best thing is that uh, you can create audio overview. Now this is not a gimmicky feature. So let me just click on the audio overview and it will generate the audio from the sources so if you have let's say 40 different pdf you can actually put it everything here and it will generate the audio that i will show you in a minute now apart from that i have a mind map feature so if i click on mind map it will take few seconds and it will create a very nice visual representation of what is going on so here it says lithium dendrite growth in solid state battery and then you can click on a particular topic then it will show the different subheadings similarly for each of the term you can click and get a 
detailed description of each of it for example if i click on key findings it says void growth precedes rendered formation interlayer impact void and rendered growth now when you click on it it will create like a sub prompt and it will show where that particular part is described in the paper right this is really nice and the graphical representation actually help you to get an overall picture of the different terms and findings now not only that just like chat gpt or any other tool you can also talk um, about it yeah now that the audio overview is done we can actually listen to it so if i click on play welcome back to the deep dive glad to be here you know our listeners they're all about getting up to speed quickly on the things that matter most. And uh, well, a lot of you have been pinging us about battery tech lately. Yeah, seems like everyone's uh, everyone's really tuned into this right now. It is the future. And um, you sent in some really interesting research that zones in on a big hurdle for better batteries, but also like a really smart way to potentially get around it. Yeah, and probably for a lot of our listeners, the idea of solid state batteries with lithium metal is already something they're tracking. I mean, it makes sense, right? More and So even with a solid barrier, the sneaky lithium finds a way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's where these metallic inner layers come into play. The idea is to basically add another super thin layer of metal between the solid electrolyte and the lithium metal itself. What's the thinking behind that? The researchers had this idea that by putting a different material right there at that critical interface, they could influence how lithium ions are deposited. So as you can see that it really creates a nice podcast kind of thing that you can listen. And you also have an interactive mode that you can use uh, to basically discuss in more detail, right? Now you can also have notes. You can have like a timeline kind of thing depending on your work if it requires. So this is more useful when you are working on a review article or something right so for example uh, when i click on the timeline in the cast of characters you can see that uh, here i have a researcher at the ssu bangalore performed the comsol simulation for the study and so on right so this is really useful so let me actually uh, create or different uh, notebook now here i will add multiple pdfs of a particular research so i have some pdfs but it is mostly related to on-chip uh, photonic interconnect and related studies so i'll just paste the source and let it upload and we'll see how everything goes so by the way, I don't have any paid subscription. These are all like free uh, tire. So you can just sign in to Google and actually check. Now, if I click on add source, you can see there's a source limit. So even if I have uploaded like a ton of PDFs, it is not even halfway through and I can even upload more. So this is really very, very powerful. So maybe I can upload few more. So I'll upload few more PDFs. So I have around 20 PDFs now. And now what I can do, I can have an audio overview of the overall sources. Now I can write, can you rise all the sources in three, four lines? Let's see if it can actually do that. The sources cover a range of topic in photonics, including theoretical modeling and experimental analysis on on-chip optical devices. So I can also create an audio overview. I haven't done, okay, it actually says generating conversation based on 18 sources. So imagine like reading 18 paper in brief uh, just imagine you are brushing through the abstract of 18 paper at once. So this is kind of what is happening in the audio overview stuff. So let it happen. And in the meantime, I'm interested to ch check the mind map. So let's see what it actually does when I have 18 sources of 
recent research articles and what it actually does okay it created a integrated photonics main head and inside that we have different subdivisions so we have waveguide characteristics i'm interested to make this full screen so inside waveguide characteristics it has all this okay so then we have material and fabrication so these are the different materials that are used then we have device and components these are the different devices and components so this is really nice way to get an overview of the different techniques methodologies materials devices overall picture of what is going on this is even more useful if you are working with review articles or a specific domain for example i can click on optical interconnection and then get a overview about the optical interconnect and stuff that are there within this paper since it is showing the citation i think yeah it will actually show you which paper and which paragraph it is talking about it so this is really nice now apart from that you can also chat with all these sources and uh, definitely you can always copy and export it so you can save as note you can also use the copy button to copy it and so on i think this is really nice and i'll wait for few seconds so that this audio is complete and we will try to listen to this audio and yeah this is really fun so i'll pause the video now and wait for the audio yeah welcome to the deep dive so now it's complete you know the show where we break down these crazy complex topics that's not bad but there's probably still room for improvement in terms of energy efficiency still the idea of having these tiny energy sipping switches that can handle mid infrared light it's a game changer for sensing technologies. Totally agree. Okay, so we've talked about amplifying light, controlling light. How about how light interacts with matter on a really fundamental level? There's a paper here about coupling light and organic materials in these one-dimensional photonic waveguides. That sounds pretty hardcore. Oh, it is. This is where we really start to blur the lines between light and matter. Wow, this is really interesting. So let me try the interactive mode. I don't know if it works. So it will, uh, yeah, it will ask for microphone permission. Oh, our listeners got something to share. Let's hear it. So tell me top five important inferences that you have got from all the 18 sources. Oh, that's a fantastic question. Let's unpack this. Yes, a great way to synthesize all of this. What stands out to you? Okay, if I had to pick just five, I'd say first, the advancements in material science, like with those erbium, ytterbium, doped, lithium, niobate waveguides and germanium on insulator for mid-infrared. It's all about finding the right materials for the job. Absolutely. And related to that, the increasing precision in controlling light at the nanoscale whether it's through doping concentrations or the intricate design of photonic crystals and metamaterials. Second, I'm really struck by the power of integrated photonics to miniaturize complex instruments like that spectrometer on a chip. That has huge implications for making technology more accessible. Indeed. The potential for portable and point of care devices is quite significant. This connects with our earlier point about efficiency. Third, the innovative ways researchers are manipulating light itself, like with those non-hermitian skin states and orbital angular momentum beams, it's like unlocking new dimensions of control. Exactly. What's fascinating here is how fundamental physics principles are being harnessed for practical applications. Fourth, the growing role of computational methods and AI in designing and optimizing photonic structures. That neural network design for non-hermitian states mind-blowing. This raises an important question about the future of design in this field. It suggests we can tackle problems that were previously intractable. And finally, the increasing importance of open source hardware, like that 3D printed rotation stage, it's democratizing research and making advanced tools more widely available. What's exciting about that is how it fosters collaboration and accelerates innovation wow, within the science community. Wow, this is really community. nice. Okay, let me so ask those are my top five takeaways. Question. What are yours? I think you've covered them. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so can you just tell me in one line which of them is 
the latest research in terms of energy and power Okay, let's see. The work on low voltage electroreflective modulators for ultra low power interchip optical interconnects seems very recent and directly related to energy efficiency. Yes, that research, along with the development of efficient erbium dope thin film lithium niobate waveguide amplifiers. Oh, wow. I mean, I was actually blown by that. Like, I haven't tried this number of PDF, so by the time I'm recording the video, this is the first time I'm, I'm doing that. So this is really surprising uh, and it's really useful. At least for me, it's really useful. So I hope you will try and find it useful too. So let me know in the comment uh, if you have tried this or if you are going to try, what are the goods, pros and cons, whatever you have found. So yeah, that's it. And if you find this video helpful and interesting, please uh, do share your comment and um, do support my work. Thank you and have a nice day.